Hey there YouTube, it's Sybils and Bits here, back at it again with another Arcanium run. Had a brief hiatus there for about a week, nothing to worry about, we're still playing some Arcanium. Basically, life and work is getting a little bit hectic. Uh, work specifically, we are nearing end of quarter, which is obviously very important for like the company's finances, so everybody's getting all up in a tizzy. And everyone else is going crazy and it's just very stressful so there are days where i come home and i just want to <laughs> go straight and sleep but uh been uh missing playing some arcanium we actually have a beta branch that's supposed to be coming out sometime this week i've been debating if i'm going to jump into the beta branch for the sakes of recording more footage or if I'm just going to wait until everything gets released obviously I want to get my hands on all the new toys that they're adding get a look at where balance is supposed to be stuff like that but I also don't necessarily want to I don't know I don't <laughs> I don't want to give uh, first impressions of necessarily something that might be buggy or unfinished so having other people take a crack at that for me I might still hop in there and give some feedback. I don't know. We'll have to cross that bridge when it gets there. Otherwise, the update itself is supposed to be out April 1st, and that's quite exciting because that's pretty soon. It's also just before the big update for Back for Blood, so it's going to be quite a big month. Lots of exciting stuff going on. Anyways, down in the comments below, I guess my question for the video will be, um, is there any point in which your job, assuming of course that uh, you guys have a job, some of you guys might be younger or out of work, that's perfectly fine, but uh, is there any point where that gets pretty stressful for you guys? Go ahead and leave down as much as you want down in the comments below. It's nice to uh, hear about other people's woes, helps us uh, feel some solidarity that, well, we're all just uh, trying to get by through the day. Anyways, go ahead and start a run. It's also interesting to hear, like, what exactly is stressful for different people. Like, some jobs you wouldn't expect to be stressful because they, air quotes, seem like easy jobs to people who, um, who are out of the know then you learn something about other occupations that way. All right, well, we are basically three colors here, which is, as I usually say, quite spookums. It makes um, deciding where we're gonna go a little bit rough, but we got some good damage here. Look at our ultis again. I was just rotating them. I wasn't even looking at them. Yeah, we've got good... Oh, that's blue damage. I was about to say we got some incredible red damage. But... We also got decent shielding. We got Milady, who, again, is deceptively tanky because of her passive. And so she'll be able to pretty much block for herself in the early game. Tara, of course, does not have block early game. That's almost making me want to go to Scorchlands, but especially because we have Shinzo and he's very powerful there. But if we don't draw a good defense card, then we're going to pretty much have to just face race everything. We do have Shinzo though, who can taunt for her, and that's going to help quite a bit. We got Lady for positioning team's got a lot of damage, so I'm not necessarily concerned about that at all. The one reason why I would maybe not want to go to Scorched Lines is because of the fact that 50% um, of the enemies are going to be red and blue. But there's really not a better place. Like, obviously, our best damage is red, so Anandor is actually pretty good. Because we don't... Like, we have a lot of blue damage with Lady and Shinzo, but those are basically our taunts and Lady's mainly just playing blue cards to the block. 
so we could probably get by with Anador. And having the extra health will make Tara feel a little bit tankier. Those primary damage, though, is Backlash and Seismic Strike at the beginning, and so that's green. So we're going to have to rely on specifically Tara's red damage cards and Lady to take out those enemies. So that might also be a bit uh, rough. But starting in Anador, we get access to the Poison Relics, Poison on Crit, Poison on Hit, Poison when hit. And those are incredibly powerful, especially because we have a character who can almost readily make poison. We also have Shinzo on green, so we have access to, I believe it's virulent skin, which makes it so that when you get hit, you are going to poison enemies. And so that can activate that as well. So we have a, a good win condition here. In order to get our crits, we also have... There's also some very good crit cards in there too, like the, um, I forget what it is. It's either Anadorian Bow or the Quiver, the Ornate Quiver, that makes it so that your first ranged attack crits. And we could use that on a number of people, but most specifically, uh, Taro is probably going to be our win condition, and we're going to try and, like, one-shot a boss or something like that. Going here for gold, I don't really know if anything that this team would want to buy. Like... Relics, we could go for... The main thing is that Uzir is... Like, obviously the relics are more than what I uh, feel is, you know, there. But when I think of Uzir, I think that burn builds want to be here. Because um, just like Anador has the, the poison relics, Uzir has the burn relics. So we're able to utilize that. And Scorchlands has the, the Hex Relics, which we don't really have anybody who applies Hex, but we can make that work, honestly. We can get the Hex when hit Relic. And so all we have to do is tank with Shinzo for one round, and then we pretty much get full access. Or even, like, Hex on hit on Lady. She'll stack that up real quick. So this is honestly a very difficult decision. But I'm definitely thinking either Anador or Scorchlands. And I'm leaning towards Scorchlands simply because we have Shinzo and he just takes care of a lot of enemies here. Oh, we are going to need to find um, Cleanse either way though, which thankfully we have two green heroes. Sorry about that, had to get the door real quick. I went ahead and made a couple of decisions before I headed out. I did start in Anador, and our quests are... This one in Uzir that we're probably not going to do. We got 20,000 Scorchlands, maybe, for 600 gold. And then we got uh, 30 enemies in Anador for 3 upgrade abilities, which is pretty good if we're able to get that. We are in a corner. And in order to get access to this campfire, we would have to do this breach battle. I'm not quite feeling good about our damage. Like, we have Tara and Milady. We could probably do this, but off the base deck, that's probably not a wise idea. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go here. And we fully realize that we're going to take a lot of damage because um, we're going to stack poison onto ourselves due to the map. So we're going to try and race down the enemies as fast as possible. Milady and Shinzo block very well, so I'm not really worried about them. It's the fact that Tara has no access to either cleanse or block herself that this is going to become quite a problem. And we're going to have to go into an elite afterwards. That's not great. This may be a short video. Alright, what can we do here? Honestly terrible. That. We'll just have to tank this. That's the way that we're going to take the least amount of damage here. This guy's gonna get ready to ult, but this guy's gonna die to the poison, so we don't have to worry about that guy. 
Um, and I don't think this guy is going to be able to act either. Let's let's map this out. Three, seven, eleven. wasn't too bad considering the next fight that's really going to be the problem. Okay. So this is very interesting. What we could do is possibly go for taunt on both Lady and Tara and just have them make sure that she takes no damage. That's what Repost is trying to tell me here. But even if um, we've only got one person targeting us, Repost is still good because it's uh, it would be 10, five per energy. That's incredible. This will deal critical damage very easily, but it's only for one for four. Which is okay. But it is a source of critical damage. This would stack more poison, which is actually not very good where we're at. Having poison on an enemy is okay, especially if it's going to enable a crit. But assuming that we're going to be stacking poison while in Anador, especially because we're trying to... We're going to try and kill 30 enemies here due to the one quest. Granted, only a third of the enemies are green. This... I don't know. I'm honestly feeling much better about Repost. Would have much have preferred to have gotten a defensive card. But... It's looking like we're going to have to either do a breach battle or an elite. And I'm thinking I feel better about the elite. Mainly because we're going to have to kill an elite anyway here and kill a barrel. Whereas here, if we burst down an elite, we never have to deal with that elite again. And again, our defense is spotty, to say the least. Can't fool me, this was the same fight as last time. Oh, it's going to be a problem, though. Yeah. Farewell may die here. So how do we not die here? Probably should have set these people differently. Because she could have gotten her full damage on this uh, Razor Fang here. Whereas we're going to have to... an action point on Tara to do this. Could have done 12 damage, so if we miss this by 4, I'm going to be uh, a little upset with myself. Good news, we wouldn't have missed it by that. Actually, actually, we would have, but it would have required us to hit him with all this, which isn't something that would actually happen, so we're actually fine. Well, fine adjacent. We're about to take 15 damage because of reasons. Am I even going to be able to break this guard here?
I honestly think that I do this. I don't think that's worth taking six damage actually, we're gonna do that. I really wanted to stack uh, poison on this um, Iron Claw here, but it wouldn't have mattered because he gets uh, three resilience anyways. And this is exactly what we're looking for here. He has the splash shield, so we're actually perfectly fine here. And we don't want to taunt him though. It's actually turned out better than expected. Considering how quick we uh, went from the Razor Fang to the Forest Crawler, this probably could have been a breach battle. I just get kind of concerned when you got enemies that uh, ult you like this. Kill you? Uh, we can. I think we got pretty lucky there. So, kind of torn here. Who has the best ultimate? Lady Seven, they're eight. So I want to get some defense on Tara. That might actually be better just for me to grab Healing Balm. Granted, we're going to be using our ultimate much more than uh, every four turns, which would make this equal to this. Maybe we do grab Wind Chime. We can always hand it off to somebody else. So, if I grab dual, then we want four action points on the lady. Which isn't something that isn't normally not the case. However, the problem is, is that... I don't know, do we actually want action points on Tara? The real problem is that if we go dual into repulsed, theoretically speaking, we are actually not getting... We're not playing any blue cards, so we're not blocking for anything. So what actually happens is we deal six to one enemy, and then it would be six times three, 18 to another, which is a lot of damage. However, now ladies being targeted by two people, theoretically speaking, and now we're relying on either absolutely killing something or we're relying on Shinzo to be able to go in there and block for her. Which honestly might not be a bad plan. Because, I mean, if it kills, right? If an enemy is within 18 of death, then she's able to kill one of the enemies. Difficult. I, I want to take Touche because it's just good. All the red cards will increase the amount of damage and shield steal that we get. And it's a blue card, so we get another two shield on top of it. This will pretty much cover Lady for, like, the early game. I think we take this. There's our shrine. 
they keep giving us the same fight? What's going on with this? Okay. Probably not put... Actually, Shinzo's forward is green. This is probably fine. This is probably fine. Yeah. That's kind of a problem. honestly going very well. I thought we were dead. Got a little bit of a heal there. Probably made back most of what we took there. Draw isn't bad. Especially upgraded. Draw allows us to have a um, cycle through our deck faster. Well, technically not, but it um, allows us to grab cards that we actually want later in the game. This can become very important. Otherwise, one cost, one ward is not very good. One cost, two ward is. Because if we were to spend one action point right now to give I, one of these two ward, they would only get two more action points to play the rest. And Milady already has two retain cards in her deck, so we don't really want to add any more. The ward would be very good on Shinzo, though. I don't think that we do it. Uh, Templar Rush is very good. It's not counting the backlash. It's just better than Sacred Bulwark. I've already passed one of these. I should probably take this, but... If Tara is going to be our damage, getting this upgraded and actually like working on getting some arrows. There's also a very good setup with this. Call me crazy, I'm going to take this. I'm going to equip it and replace it with one of her poison arrows because again, the poison arrows aren't really for us right now. Go to this alchemist. These are all weird, but there's going to be enemies that put um, buffs on themselves that we don't necessarily want. The dispel is very good. Otherwise, the astral familiar is a 4 4 block, deals red damage, which is pretty good. And then, of course, some purple damage, which there's only two enemies that are purple in this area. 
So this would help us get a lot of damage out, actually. Might enable us to take that early breach battle. Hmm. Take that. Now, burn would be very good here. For the same reason that uh, hex is very good. There's absolutely no enemies here that will resist this. And then, of course, assuming that we're shifting down to Scorch Lands, 50% of the enemies are going to be resistant to Voodoo Potion, which is the reason why I was debating not taking it. But only, um, I believe, two enemies? Three enemies are uh, resistant to red. We don't buy any of these, though. We need to keep this uh, shop open. And we're going to take this. Oof, relics? Okay. So we should be able to power up. Grab the shine. Shrine, the relic shop, the event. Hopefully that doesn't cut off our inn. Because we're likely going to want to heal. Before we take the shard battle. But we also probably want to hit that breach battle while it's easy. Come on. Red? Nope. Oh well. Still technically more damage than we would have done. You know? How we do this? That eight damage is gonna hurt, but I could move Shinzo over here. I know people are gonna say that it saved two damage, but I'm trying to split the damage relatively evenly so that when I heal at the end for twenty, everyone's gonna be relatively fine. Oh jeez, why you do this? Why you do this? Actually, this damage there. Rather not. Do I want to swap you in? I think I do. Pretty good. We're covered. Kind of a waste of AP. Definitely a misplay. Um, this is over. I wish we would have had Vault Strike earlier. I respect it much more than Repost cheaper it's only melee though right is repost only melee it is but uh this could scale harder harder but it's forced us into i guess we didn't take that one card but this is one less damage and usually does the same amount it's just not retained parry would allow us to obviously shield much better Almost confident in our shielding, but since these are all 
cards that we're looking at here, I would actually assume that if we can upgrade dodge, it gets free. It's very, um, hmm. You know what? I actually think I take the gold here. Weird as that is. Now, we did not take the two one costs on the lady, so we don't necessarily want to grab three AP on her. However, she is our damage dealer, so I still think that we do that. Otherwise, we could take Tara, that way, if we had Arrow Quiver or whatever the card is, and we pull a two cost, and we have a two cost in our hand, should really know the names of these things then we're able to do 16 damage which is basically what we would do with four energy anyways but it enables us to do that and if we draw two of those um heavy arrows we're still able to do 16 damage which is still not <laughs> it's crazy it's still not more than milady can do with three energy it's just that um she gets to do it at a range. With an extra energy though, Shinzo could really taunt. But I think we would want draw on him first. We're gonna go ahead and the other okay, I should be thinking. The other reason why we would want to grab the AP on Tara is because then if she plays all of her AP two turns in a row, she gets to ult and heal herself. So she's going to get 50% more healing than she would if we were waiting every three turns with three action points. Oh man. I think our first run, we showed how good these things are. And I think it's almost our best option. The only reason that I would grab wealth is because we know we have a relic shop now. There's only one relic shop per area, and since we know where it is, that's going to end up being so much gold. Maybe we go Mr. Moneybags this time. We gotta assume too, like every battle we're getting at least 50, so that's another 10 gold, and all that will add up. The main reason that I would want uh, the, sh the Soldiers of Luna under Unity is... Again, it's four free block for everybody, which allows us to just be more aggressive, which is apparently the route that we're going. And it does four AoE damage at the start of turn one, assuming that the enemy isn't uh, yellow resistant, which this area only has two, two yellow resistant enemies. So it's a lot of easy damage. Since I usually don't, we're gonna go ahead and grab the gold. So I feel like we, in our setup, we should have grabbed the uh, Soldiers of, the, of Luna there. Should have went with Unity. Okay, what I'm afraid of is that when I take this one, and this is going to be a battle and we won't be able to get back here, so we're going to go here first. Okay, that took our um, event, which is kind of suffer. Take that. I'm going to take this. Okay, there's our event that we're looking for. Okay. This is very interesting. One might at the start of each turn is basically one free card with Milady. And currently with our ultimate and the repost that we picked up, we've got a lot of multi-strike. So we double down into that. Same thing with the, the dual strike that she has. So she's a, in most cards, she's actually getting like 50% damage boost right off the start. Not even counting her playing the more red cards. Obviously that's not the case on Repost because it has five damage, but uh, it's still plus two damage. That's like upgrading a common card. One backlash whenever you play a nature card would almost allow us to grab better cards on Shinzo and then still, ha still have him deal damage. The problem is that we haven't taken any cards on Shinzo, so the only green cards that he has is... 
Seismic Strike, and I believe Sacred Bulwark is green too, which already gives him a block. But there's a lot of good green commons that uh, also defend very well too, and he would be able to have access to those and do some damage. Not really looking for him for damage anyways right now. Hell, even his, uh, his ultimate is just to shield people. I think we take this combat staff. It's also good on other people too. So when, if Milady ever grows out of it, we can give it to anybody and it'd still be very good. They're all not very appetizing. My appetite is ruined. That is huge. Took a card that we said that if it got upgraded, it'd be huge. And we got a free upgrade. Okay, so here's what I am thinking. We have access to our shard battle, so we don't got to worry about that. Say so we grab Shinzo some cards, take on this Breach Elite battle. Actually, we don't even have to take on this Breach Elite battle. It'd be much easier for us, and it'd allow us to potentially get this camp, but we should take this card pile and then unlock our capital again. That would be one, two, three. We could heal at that point and then take on either of these shard battles here. That's good to me. Shinzo needs cards. Those. <laughs> okay. Uh, Templar Rush is the card that we skipped twice, and I told you that I regretted it. Essence Crash is different than spending one energy for one ward, because it's also dealing six damage. But what this does mean is that we generally will want to upgrade Shinzo's AP next. And destroying all shields and dealing 6 damage is literally our seismic strike, except extraordinarily better. Those were all good cards to get. Seismic strike, and probably another seismic strike. Hey. Okay. Do not want Shinzo here. He primarily does green damage now, so putting him in front of the Iron Claw is pretty good. Let's kill this thing as soon as possible. This thing's annoying. It does a lot of damage, but for the most part, it just buffs itself. We'll, t we'll take that. but I almost think that I do this. It's a lot of damage to take, but
Oh, that's going to be blue damage. Might be in trouble. That wasn't so bad. And we're gonna just set ourselves up for a kill next turn. Hmm. Giving us some pretty good cards. Courage is exceptionally good. I would prefer it to be upgraded, but it's still fine. And we were talking about how 5 per AP is a very good rate. Well, Patient Strike is that, but it um, retains. Which I guess is the same that this does, but it's melee. And as an upgrade, it gains 60% instead of 50%. Is very good. In fact, kind of weird. You could put that on Tara. That would be exceptionally weird, though. It is more damage than her. Um, let's actually get the the sniper shot. It's more damage than her sniper shot will do, but it's in melee. I don't know. I could also see her using courage. I could see a lot of people using courage. Lady basically upgrades this thing for free uh, because of her passive, and then drawing one card isn't necessarily a a one for one draw is okay, but when it scales her as hard as it does, it seems pretty good to me. Because the only other card that gives like that much might. Is flex and that costs life. We're gonna take a patient strike though. Get some more red damage in here. This is spooky. game. I want to damage this thing as little as possible. going to take a truck ton of damage, aren't we? We're okay with taking the 11 on Tara, though, because she's able to heal herself. Really?
He honestly might have to pivot away from the shard battle. May have been way too early to be doing this. Pretty suffer. Go into our... Oh, it goes into our deck. Of course we were going to draw a bad hand. Of course. Found that, I suppose. Excuse me. Oh, I was weakened. That is tragic. Now he's dead. Yeah, we don't take the shard battle here, which is a um, shame because it's going to be a huge power boost for us. We'll live, though. Not too worried about that. Well, there we go. Counter damage. I'm honestly debating putting it on my lady because Well, I guess what this means is we Hello? later. We want to wait till that's upgraded, which we are at four more enemies to go. Have we already determined that we aren't going to do this, because that would probably mean that we die. So what we're going to do is we're just going to wrap up some errands. We're going to kill ourselves, hit these two events, see where we're at. We want toxic arrows instead of obsidian arrows right now. Oh, it's just a regular breach battle? What the heck am I afraid of? Scuff that one up. Here's how we're going to do this.
that's a little suffer. I would almost say that we're here now, but uh, since we have that relic, we can't critical twice. So this is literally just an obsidian arrow. Now that we have crit though, we do need a source of vulnerable. about that. I think we're using all of our artifacts, so we don't want to do anything with that. There's a... I don't think we took any air quotes bad cards, so we don't want to use that either. And we honestly just upgrade two random cards here. Lunge is pretty good, Toxic Arrow is pretty good. Let's just make sure that that's the one we have on our deck, and it's not. Honestly feeling boomerang toss. Gives us another taunt in Shinzo's deck. And it's very good upgraded. Mind uh, being offered two cards that we just offered you? Counter attack is also pretty good, but uh, not quite what we're looking for here. About it. If you have any comments or feedback, be sure to leave it down in the comments below. Any misplay alerts, observations, comments, questions, Go ahead and throw those right down there. Until then, I'll catch you guys around.